Yes, Sheikh. Um, you know, adab is a very important thing in Islam, and we have to inculcate this in our children. For instance, the adequate of eating and sneezing, sleeping, drinking, you know, and especially uh, eating. Uh, we gather around the table for two, three meals for a day, and it's very important that uh, we teach the children something like, you know, proper eating. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He wanted to praise His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said what? وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He said that you have the best manners, you have great manners, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which He transmitted to His ummah. So if we stick to them, we will have the same quality of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the prophets, of even angels. Uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us the etiquette of doing everything from eating all the way till defecating oh and answering the call of nature, going to the bathroom. So today we have a bunch of things to talk about, the etiquette of eating and uh, drinking, the etiquette of the greeting, visiting, sitting with others, uh, socializing, a lot of etiquettes. And uh, you know, not to waste any further time, we'll begin with the etiquette of eating. Yeah, this is the most important one to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, to eat. Yeah. well, it is for everyone. Uh, because actually, that these are practices which happen on a daily basis. And remember, if you would really like your children to uh, acquire and uh, adopt those etiquette, you yourself have to uh, practice them so before them. Yeah. So the first thing that before eating, of course, you have to have the concept of who got you this food, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We talked about before, in Surah Abasa, فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ don't waste an opportunity to bring the concept of uh, the, the, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in providing us regularly in the mind of your children whenever there is a chance. So before eating, it is prescribed by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to wash one's hands thoroughly. Not only if you're working in a restaurant, no. Yeah. Even if you are at home, if you're studying, writing with a pencil, doing anything, it is a tradition of the Prophet ﷺ since he said that barakat ut ta'am, the blessing of the food, falls in washing the hands before and after. Some people assume that washing the hands should be only after, since your hands yeah. might get too dirty and so on. No, it's before yeah. and after. Because you're touching stuff all day, this table, exactly. and doorknobs. And exactly, and you might have to eat by your hand, of course, the right hand, and you take to your mouth, along with the food, germs, bacteria, and so on. So it is very, very good uh, uh, practice to wash the hands before eating. Make water, sure water is enough for water and soap? No, of course, anything that will make sure that your hands are clean before eating. Uh, of course, uh, before touching the food, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave you this uh, uh, beautiful food. So we have to uh, praise Him. We have to remember Him. And that's why we have to mention His name in the beginning by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The tasmiyah or saying Bismillah before every time you eat, before every time you drink. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You say it out loud and uh, you know, I give a credit to my wife that she uh, taught my kids at the age of even a year and a half, beginning a year and a half. So you used to teach them and dictate to them what to say. Before every meal, she would say Bismillah. And I was extremely excited and happy once I heard my son saying Bismillah, the first word he uttered. Yeah. It's very, very pleasant. And it has become a habit that every time he gets to eat or drink, he knows that it's time to eat, so he says Bismillah. Yeah. <laughs> and now he says Alhamdulillah. You know? My wife did that with our daughter and it made a drinking chair it's by the, by in the kitchen. Every time she has to sit down to drink, and then she has to say Bismillah before, and she does it every time without even like. It's a habit that she sets down to drink yeah. and drink. My wife also, my little girl, uh, Sarah, you know, she teaches her, she's only 18 months. Mashallah. And she teaches her uh, Bismillah. Anytime she goes to eat, uh, she would say Bismillah. If she forgot, then my wife would say, um, what do you have to say? Bismillah. And some, some parent might, might say, you know what, um, the children will not learn. They don't understand what they're saying. But no, they this is not true. They think yeah. you're Wahhabi. They pick up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, talking about forgetting, even yeah. for adults, the Prophet sallallahu said that whenever one of you is about to eat, he should remember the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before eating. But if you forget, you know, 
then you should say Bismillahi ala awalihi wa akhiri in the name of Allah in its beginning and its end. So that, you know, why do we say Bismillah? Of course, to remember that and to bring to our attention that this food is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the States, I heard some people saying, good food, good meat, let's eat. No, <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> over the lips and through the gums, look out stomach, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it would be best to remember that this gift is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also does not allow Satan to eat with you. Because if you don't say Bismillah, a shaitan will say to his company, we've guaranteed dinner or whatever meal you're eating. Then him and his company will eat with you. And that's why people who do not say Bismillah, they never feel full. They want to eat more and more and more. There is no blessing. There is no barakah. It's been withdrawn from the food. And the food is never sufficient. Versus if you say Bismillah, the Prophet ﷺ said that the food of one should be sufficient for two. Yeah. And the food of two could feed four, four and so on. Yeah. But that's in Muslim, by yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about praising Allah before and after, once uh, I finish the meal, I say, Alhamdulillah. Of course, when your child is very young, uh, he will not be able to encompass the entire dua. But yeah. as they grow, you teach them a bit by bit. Yeah. So beginning by saying, Alhamdulillah, once they finish eating or drinking, then as they grow older, you can teach them the full dua, which is, الحمد لله الذي أطعمنا وسقانا وجعلنا مسلمين Praise be to Allah and thanks to Him who fed us and gave us the drink and made us Muslims. So you link between food, drink and belief. الحمد لله الذي أطعمنا وسقانا وجعلنا مسلمين I have a question about the actual etiquette when you're physically eating. Um, we use our, our hands. Um, my family. We don't use forks. I know you, you can use forks, but we don't use forks. And we sit on the floor. We don't sit at a table. Um, what is preferable to do? Well, let me tell you this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once had uh, uh, a young boy whom he used to raise. Ab Umar uh, ibn Abi Salam, may Allah have mercy on him and may Allah be pleased with him. So once he was eating in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you know kids, you know, especially if there is meat, they like to pick and choose from here and there. <laughs> it's yeah. table. <laughs> you know, and we Muslims eat from one big dish, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so there is more barakah. So Umar was picking up the food from here and there. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught Allah. him and of course all of us and our children, saying, Ya Ghulam, oh young boy, hey listen carefully. Bismillah, the first etiquette. Say Bismillah before eating. وَكُلْ بِيَمِينِكْ And use your right hand in eating. وَكُلْ مِمَّا يَلِيكْ And eat from the part which is right in front of you. Do not keep uh, you know, looking forward for the food from in front of everyone. Uh, talking about using forks and spoons, it's permissible. Nothing wrong with that. If you want to eat with your hand, the Prophet ﷺ himself <laughs> he used to eat by his right hand. And he used to eat by the three fingers, those three fingers. Why? Thumb, index, and middle. Yeah. So that you pick up only uh, enough bite to chew on and to digest at a time. Yeah. That's those uh, serving spoons. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Supersize that. Supersize, yeah. supersize in everything. And unfortunately, we got into uh, the, the, you know, the disaster of joining the flow. Go with the flow. Yeah. Now they serve Coke. I assume it's a gallon. Yeah, it's, it's Everything a, yeah. is super sized. It's a one and a half liter. So the purpose no. of eating with a finger is so that you don't stuff yourself too much, put too much food into the mouth. Yeah. So you and follow that hadith, no. one third, one third, and one third. No, and I'm talking about uh, eating. Uh, you know, many people, many parents think that, uh, you know, I'm taking good care of my kids. I feed them enough. It's not about feeding them enough and stuffing them like, you know, a, a pillow, a case. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's about oh. feeding oh. them what's useful and what's sufficient for them to maintain their health. Remember that the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> informed us that maintaining your, the health of your stomach will maintain the health of your entire body. So the Prophet Sallallahu said that it's enough for you to eat to maintain his life and to be able to function. But if one is really uh, into eating, he should not exceed the following. One third of his stomach for the food, one third is for the water, and one third you should leave empty for breathing. air, for breathing. Now, فَثُلُثٌ لِطَعَامِهِ وَثُلُثٌ لِشَرَابِهِ وَثُلُثٌ لِنَفَسِهِ Some people say, don't say Assalamu Alaikum for people who are eating or 
uh, they are backing their speech by hadith. I don't think is uh, or not. Uh, once again, uh, uh, this is some of the false and fabricated cultural traditions where they teach the children, especially in the Arabic society, mm. that if you're eating, you should not be talking. Because it's not polite to talk while eating. Well, the opposite is true. That the Prophet ﷺ uh, advised us to talk while eating. To converse with others while eating. And he used to do that wasallam. I know what you mean. That some people say that uh, salama ala ta'am. This is a fabricated hadith. And never refer to this hadith as a hadith. Okay? Mm -hmm. This statement is not a hadith at all. <laughs> it's just somebody talking. And, uh, it's just it. weird. Some people come while I'm eating and say, Shaykh, I know that uh, I should not be greeting you while eating. Why shouldn't you? Okay. <laughs> so the, and it's so widespread to the point that people maybe assume he, it's a, it's maybe a hadith. Maybe he, he don't want to waste his time while eating. Stop and say, uh, Wa alaykum as salam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God just has his head now. Well, uh, you know, in the West, we overeat like mad. And, you know, uh, in New York, a lawsuit was just filed against... Uh, McDonald's for making people fat because people overeat. They don't. Well, especially, <laughs> especially in this Ramadan, mm -hmm. right? After iftar, people mm -hmm. nobody observe the that one third. You know, have all these meals. They eat almost full. No, no space for even water. Remember, yeah. our best example is <laughs> Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Whatever he prescribed for us is the most reliable thing that can help us in our life. And of course, we have transmitted that to our children. Uh, I have remembered one very important thing. There is uh, some bad practice, which is done by adults as well as the children. Basically, because not too many people are aware of its danger. That blowing in the hot, mm. warm food or drink uh, mm. to cool it down. Uh, no, the Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from doing so. And of course, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, many of you know that... The, uh, scientifically proven that this is dangerous because actually Transmit you're breathing bacteria. into the food germs, mm. bacteria and of course mm. your carbon dioxide mm. so <laughs> the food is hot wait until it cools down but do not blow and breathe into the food I'm uh, going to make some coffee because I'm kind of tired it's getting late. So, would you guys want some coffee? I would love to. Uh -huh. Love yeah. some. Well, it's actually good. not coffee. It's Nescafe. Is that going <laughs> to work? That would be even better. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll be right, right back with that, inshallah. Barakallahu <laughs> feekum. Here he is. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. khairan. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know you guys are probably dying of you. thirst, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know I am. Ismail. Hi, Awalisha. Is this gold? No, it's uh, it's fake. Because oh. I know that it's a wrong to drink oh, any gold or silver. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the very important things we have to keep in mind. Uh, I visited a family, a Muslim family, once, and they had this uh, uh, serving spoons and trays, Bismillah. and it was all pure silver. And they were very proud that they have this. So I brought to them the, to their attention that the Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from eating or drinking in uh, gold or silver utensils. This is haram, period, even if you can afford it. And this is for men and women as well. Uh, some women, women can yeah. wear it, but they now, can't drink out of it. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, as a follow-up to what we were talking about, that uh, the etiquette of eating, there is a very important thing. If we're having a feast or if we're eating together and we're sitting on the same table or on the floor, yeah. I personally uh, enjoy sitting on the floor while I'm eating no, no. so that I get to sit the same sitting of the Prophet wasallam, which would hold one-third of my stomach. So I eat as much as I want, and meanwhile, I'm preserving one-third of my stomach empty for air. Sheikh, should, um, if I have people over at my house, should my kids eat before? Like, should we let the kids eat before the adults to make sure they get to eat? Well, once again, this is another misunderstanding where people assume that, you know, out of mercy, we should let the kids eat first, and so on. No. The Prophet ﷺ was reported to stop as... Their crying or... Well, if they're too young, yeah. that's different. Then yeah. if they are at the age where now we're disciplining them, we're teaching them the etiquette of eating. Yeah. Now they're sitting with us on the same table, on the dining place. Yeah. So in this case, they should wait and the eldest person will begin first. That yeah. was the etiquette of the Prophet ﷺ. So uh, if, you have, if you have guests over and whoever of your guests is the eldest, they should start eating? Well, that's right. And of course, talking about honoring the guests and so on, you should really uh, uh, begin by your guests serving your guests the food and letting him uh, eat first. What is the, like when you guys come over, you know, and I have people over a lot in my house, what is the best way, what is the etiquette of entering into somebody's home? Yeah. That will take us to another very important etiquette, which is the etiquette of the greeting 
mm-hmm. or tahiyya or yes. salam. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us in the Quran with a command. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tadukhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. All you who believe do not enter houses other than yours without Seek permission. وَتُسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا And to greet uh, the owners of those houses. Which greeting shall we use? Of course, the Salaam greeting of Islam, Allah. which is As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Prophet ﷺ was asked once, Ya Usama, as أَيُّ الْإِسْلَامِ خَيْرٌ Which of the practices of Islam is best? So the Prophet ﷺ said, in respect of good manners and so on. He said to offer food for those who are, you know, uh, in need. Yes. السلام, or السلام, and to spread the greeting of peace, which is Assalamu alaikum. You greet those whom you know and those whom you don't know, as long as they're Muslims in a Muslim society. You do not necessarily have to know the person by the name so that you say Assalamu alaikum, Usama. No, <laughs> just knowing that they're Muslims. Greet them. Sayyidun Abdullah ibn Umar used to go to the market uh, doing nothing. He was neither shopping nor uh, selling anything other than the, the fact that he used to Say greet alaykum. people with assalamu alaikum and yeah. hear them back answering wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is not the hardest place to have anything going on. What, what about parents? Or parents, uh, shall the, the, the child seek permission before entering on parents? Or uh, it's okay to go because they are my parents, so no problem to enter. Well, you know, I'm glad you brought this up because the greeting and seeking permission are inseparable from each other by the meaning. First, before I go to seeking permission, uh, I just remember the very interesting hadith as why should we adopt the greeting of Islam and ignore any other greeting? Especially you guys, those who live in the West yeah. and so on. Uh, hi, you know, we have uh, so many different ways to greet. Good morning, and good every day, no, well, that was an old fashioned nowadays. Ah, they now come up with. Up, dog. <laughs> 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 nowadays, they have uh, totally different techniques, and yeah. every day they come up with something new. Well, in Islam, we have our uh, ID, yeah. which is a greeting of peace. The Prophet ﷺ once was sitting in the masjid, and a man entered upon him and said, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you, Ya Rasulullah. Yes. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ten. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ten. Inshallah. And another man entered later and said, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Twenty. And the third and the last entered and said, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. May Allah's peace, blessings, mercy, and His blessings be upon you. So the Prophet ﷺ remarked saying 30, thalathul. So the companions asked the Prophet ﷺ, what's 10, 20, and 30? The Prophet ﷺ said that the first one said, Assalamu alaikum. So he earned the reward of 10 good deeds just for saying, Assalamu alaikum. Probably if you say hi or hello or good morning or what's up, you will receive a reward for that. It's a greeting, but it might be one. Would never come to the point of competing with Assalamu alaikum itself. Then if you're generous enough to say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Then that's 20 20 good deeds Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh So discussing this with your child And exhorting him to earn hasanat and good deeds Even with the greeting Will keep in mind that I should not waste an opportunity to earn 30 good deeds So if the phone rings He will pick up the phone and he will say Assalamu alaikum So if, if a person is calling, we know that Muslims live in this house. And once the conversation is over, is once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's actually going to be the greeting of uh, the dwellers of paradise. May Allah make all of us amongst them. Do you want one of the to teach my child? Before, yeah. Okay. I remember. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry <laughs> I remember one of the companions, he used to just go to the marketplace uh, just to say the salam, to get the hasanat from it. That was Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Umar. No. 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 How do we, how do we um, the, teach the children to greet non-Muslims? For instance, 
uh, non-Muslim neighbors, non-Muslim teachers and so forth. Mm. You see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us in the Quran. وَإِذَا حُيِّيتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا Whenever you've been addressed with a greeting, you should give better than thereof, or at least similar to it. أَوْ رُدُّوهَا If a non-Muslim greets you with any greeting, greet him with a similar one. So if a non-Muslim says, uh, good morning, I would say, good morning. How are you? Fine, how about yourself? And so on. But the greeting of Islam, I should only begin Muslims with it because it's composed of peace, mm -hmm. mercy, and blessings, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if a non-Muslim actually says, Assalamu alaikum, because he knows that I'm a Muslim, then I would say, wa alaikum. Wa alaikum. And upon you too, mm -hmm. similar to what he greeted me with, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so the non-Muslim um, uh, neighbors just... Whatever is common, good morning, or whatever is common in that community. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You can mm. greet them with the local greeting if you live in a society where they use this greeting or that greeting. Mm. Uh, now, your question, Osama, which is uh, seeking permission before entering upon your own parents. Yeah, yeah. There are two situations. If the children are very young and they do not really realize what's right and what's wrong, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us fi surat al nur to teach them the following. يا أيها الذين آمنوا ليستأذنكم الذين ملكت أيمانكم والذين لم يبلغوا الحلم منكم ثلاث مرات. Oh, you believe? Let your slave servants, your maids, and those the minors of your children did not reach the puberty age, seek permission before entering upon you. If you have a room in the same house, before turning the knob on and entering, they have to seek a permission. During three times in this ayah, it indicates that if the children are too young, that there are three times where they have to learn, you have to instruct them that they can never enter the room without seeking a permission. Knocking on the door and receiving a permission, yes, you may come in. مِنْ قَبْلِ صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ وَحِينَ تَضَعُونَ ثِيَابَكُمْ مِنَ الظَّهِيرَةِ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ صَلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ Three times before Salat al-Fajr. And at noon. And after the last prayer, which is the night prayer, Salat al-Ashaa. And there is a reason behind it. During those three times, people tend to rest <laughs> and maybe take off their clothes or wear light clothes. So you discipline the children, even the very young, not to enter before knocking on the door. But after these three times, they are allowed to come and go. Whenever and now they reach the puberty age, yeah. they have to seek permission during all times, whether before and Fajr, then. after Fajr, and at noon, yeah. before noon. Yeah. And for the minor ones, you know, other than those three times, parents know that uh, they are not doing anything that which could be... Uh, offending to the children to see. Mm -hmm. For instance, a man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, do I have to seek permission before entering upon my mother? I mean, she's my mother, you know? Yeah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, would you like to see her undressed? <laughs> no way. No, thank you. He said, no way. He said then, well, Ask for permission. It was the attitude of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon returning from a journey. He would camp outside al Medina and send somebody to his houses to inform them that I'm here. Not to invade. Similarly, if you're coming to your house, allow people in the house to, you know, to be in a better situation. If you are in your room, you're children in the room, or you are in the room by yourself or your wife, then before entering, they should knock on the door and seek permission. Knocking on the door and seeking permission is a very, very uh, important etiquette. And following knocking on the door, how to seek permission? Okay, um, Saying, Assalamu alaikum, that's me, may I come in? Because yeah. once a man entered, uh, before entering upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, may I come in? Who are you? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, to one of his companions, go out and teach him. He has first to say, Assalamu Alaikum. <laughs> then may I come in? And when they ask you, who are you? 
You yeah. have to declare your identity. Ismail say, Said. That's me, Ismail, uh, Abu Abdul Rahman, or such and such. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, Ana, yeah. me, that's me. Who are you? Yeah. you know? So teaching the children this etiquette is essential. And inshallah, next time, yeah, we'll time continue with the pray. etiquette of uh, visiting the sick, the etiquette of uh, talking, the etiquette of so many etiquettes we'll talk about inshallah. But before we're dismissed, would like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the beautiful dua fi surat al-furqan Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina qurrata a'yun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama Allahumma amin Thank you. Let's go pray guys.